Good evening. Ooh. It's a bad way to start here. <laughs> I'd like to call the City of Menasha Common Council meeting to order. Please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Alderman Kean. Here. Alderman Zelinski. Here. Alderman Engelbert. Here. Alderman Benner. Here. Alderman Nichols. Here. Alderman Taylor. Mm. Alderman Sevenick. Here. Alderman Langdon has been excused. First item on the agenda this evening is public comment on any matter of concern to the city. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak at this point? If you could just state your name and address for the record, please. Okay. I am Representative Amanda Stuck. Mm -hmm. And my address is 1404 North Harriman Street in Appleton. And I just wanted to stop by today just to reintroduce myself, make sure that you all know that I offer my office as a resource. If there's anything we can be helpful with or questions you need answers to, please don't ever hesitate to contact us. And I really do encourage you to contact me to let me know what we can be doing at the state level to assist you as we both serve our constituents here in the area. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Is there anyone else this evening? So no one else will move on to the report of department head, staff, and consultants. The first item is an update from Brian Tungate on the work progress at Coslo Field. Thank you. We've actually made a considerable amount of progress in the planning for this project. Been uh, been working internally uh, on it uh, with Vince. We've been doing a lot of a lot of work. Uh, really break it up into, into three pieces for this project. Uh, the first part is the backstop, and we sent out some RFPs on that a while back and uh, received some, some excellent quotes back uh, for the backstop portion of it. Uh, the low quote uh, was to a fortress fence out of Green Bay, and uh, they're going to be installing that backstop uh, this fall or late summer early fall is when we plan to do this project uh, we were initially thinking that we might put the backstop in during the winter which we could but then in, in talking to some field experts they felt that that we should wait on that and do that at the end just because you can it will put the backstop at the right level and it's it would be better for the the field work contractor to come in and, and do his his work on the field with the, the existing backstop not being in place at the time of the work. So uh, we feel good about that, about the, the prices we got. It's about uh, the backstop uh, is about $25,000. Uh, the, the fortress fence also has agreed to be a, a scoreboard sponsor, which is nice. So that, that actually, that the donation they made for that actually put their price in a little under $25,000. Uh, the second RFP that went out was for the field work itself, and we got some very competitive quotes uh, on that as well. And uh, we've we've made, we've selected a contractor to do that work as well, and that's uh, going to be mixed landscaping out of uh, Muskego, Wisconsin. Uh, we did some reference checking and and so forth on on that on that price and, uh, and, and that contractor and we feel comfortable with his skills and abilities to do the field work and ironically that that his price came in a little under 25,000 too so doing the the simple math there is uh, about fifty thousand dollars for the for two projects and that is really exactly what we have uh, budgeted at this point we have the thirty thousand 20,000 plus the 10 that the council added to this project was the 30 and the school district's commitment of 20 so um, we're, we're covered I guess right now at, at this point the third part of the project which sort of came to light uh, a week or two ago we, we initially uh, did not feel as though irrigating the infield uh, was an uh, was a necessity we were originally planning on on running a, a line out behind the mound and that was going to be for, for for adding water to the infield and so forth to the dirt part of the infield but in our in our 
conversations with uh, uh, field consultants and other experts that we uh, ran into uh, along the way. They said irrigation, you know, really is a good idea. It's, uh, it makes playability of the infield a lot better when you have a nice healthy uh, stand of uh, turf there. Um, so we have uh, since been convinced that we, that's something we really should do. Um, the devil being in the details is do, do we have the money to do that? And so at this point, uh, we, we don't have the money to do it, but uh, there's still six months or so of fundraising uh, that can take place. Uh, the field users have raised uh, around $1,300 uh, at this point. Uh, we have some money from some um, earlier fundraising uh, that's gone on. Some of you may have remembered the duck drop and so forth. So we're, we, have, we have about another 1200 or so uh, dollars uh, sitting, setting aside that could be used for that. But uh, we feel the irrigation is going to be about $10,000. So, um, you know, we're seven, eight thousand dollars $8,000 away from probably being able to afford that. We really, we really want to do it. Uh, we just need to uh, come up with the funding to make it happen. Unfortunately, we have some time to do that. So uh, that's, that's the update. You know, so two of the big pieces are in place. The third one's kind of up in the air, but we're still pursuing that. Alderman Engelberg. Uh, Brian, uh, <clears throat> timeline for the field work. Um, you said the backstop late summer. Is that, that and the field work going to kind of go hand in hand? Uh, that... we've, we've told our, uh, the people who, who use the field that we really want everybody wrapped up by mid-August. Uh, we'll probably start this project either the week of August 17th or the 24th probably take about 10 days or so and just to line it up and, and get it done. And, and from what we've been told, you know, ideal time to do it, especially if we get the irrigation, new sod down, it's, you know, everything will root and it'll be great for next spring. Are there any other questions for Director Tungate? Okay. Thank you, Brian. The second item is the minutes to receive and communications to receive. Do we have a motion this evening? Alderman Benner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. At this time, I make a motion to receive and put on file minutes A through H and communications I through M. It's a motion and a second. Is there discussion? Alderman Sevenick? Yes, I'd like to discuss uh, item K, the uh, Wisconsin 441 Racine Street intersection issue. I at this time, I'd like to thank the mayor for his involvement in this, along with uh, Alderman Taylor, who's attended uh, many of the meetings with me. Uh, this has been a, an important issue to me because at one point, DOT was looking at almost closing 12th Street off of Racine Street by only allowing for a right turn lane and not making it actually a true roundabout and this is my district and uh, I did have uh, two constituents that concern that had concerns about this but uh, I know that you know people with their daily lives all of a sudden they're gonna realize that how did this ever happen and why didn't I know about this so uh, Alderman Taylor and I've been attending these meetings and we made the DOT uh, aware how important this was to us and uh, they have had probably, what, Mayor, a dozen meetings for the public and, and for public officials also, and they've done a good job with that, and they listen to us. A lot of people say in government, you know, they don't listen to our concerns. Well, we raised our concerns, and um, they listened. But uh, most important, though, I want to thank our staff, uh, Mark Radke and Greg Kyle, for doing the follow-up work on this and making sure that uh, this roundabout is uh, done in a way that uh, addresses many of our concerns and looks like a good intersection for the future. And if folks are not aware that there's going to be a roundabout over there by Calder Stadium, they can go on the City of Menasha's website and under item K on this agenda, they'll get a map of what it'll look like 
and I'm sure that uh, you can always call either community development or public works and they'd be more than happy to help you out with that. Also too on, is it March 2nd? March 2nd at Butamore School will be a public hearing on the matter and, in, and at, that, at that time they will have um, many representatives with DOT and um, several blown up pictures so you can actually see what this looks like and that time was I believe it was like from five to, to seven and coincidentally though it's I have not missed one of these meetings this one I might miss because it's during a council meeting and uh, I'll probably go first there for a little bit and then try to get over here but uh, again I'd like to thank everybody here at City Hall who's done a great job this is something I'm quite happy about I really didn't think it was going to happen and you know when you uh, work with uh, you know individuals like the mayor and Alderman Taylor and staff um, things can work out really well so I'm, I'm very pleased Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I too didn't think this project would happen. I, I didn't think the state was going to listen to us early on. Uh, they they were not in favor of this project, and it affects about 400 vehicles a day that use that intersection at 12th and uh, Racine Road, and uh, that would be a lot of vehicles to put back down on 9th Street or to make them circle back over to uh, Airport Road, and uh, that, that just doesn't work properly. And the state really. Uh, uh, did listen to this body. This body, uh, we had a resolution. It was uh, supported uh, by all the members up here. So I appreciate that that resolution being supported 100% for somebody else's district. And also, I'd like to uh, uh, say to Representative uh, uh, Stuck tonight that uh, uh, certainly appreciate uh, the state. Uh, stepping up on this project and listening really listening to the uh, our concerns locally and I think that's where the people that that live there and and, um, and use the area know better than other people and, and they respected that and they listened to it and director Radke was instrumental too in attending these meetings and and uh, expressing our concerns for that so you can pass that along to the DOT that we appreciate that that they list the, the state government listened to us thank you I had another question on item H, Water and Light Commission meetings. And uh, Mayor, I'll direct this towards you. The base and merit pay base system 2015, uh, was there action taken on that? Or is that just uh, what you're looking at uh, uh, as far as uh, pay raises are coming in 2015? They have had a merit raise system. Now this will be the second year. Okay. And it was the continuation of that system. We can get that information for you on how it works if you'd like that. I can have uh, Melanie I, send that over to you. I would. And uh, does that ever come before this body? I've been out the council for some years and back The on. utility commission would have control over the day-to-day -day operations of the utilities, so that would be their decision. Okay, even though there's dollars involved. All the dollars uh, come from ratepayers, not from taxpayers. So just they the, have complete control over okay. how those funds would be spent. Just the lending comes from this body, is that correct? And to approve well, their lending. The um, public works projects would have to come before this body and stands right the appointments as well. Okay, thank you. So. <clears throat> um, Alderman Keehan. Thank you. So I had a question about uh, for Director McKenney about the fundraising progress for the Senior Center. Could you talk to us a little bit about where we are with that? Thank you, yes, we're um, reaching our goal uh, 87,500 was the goal. Uh, $42,753.41 were raised um, in private donations, and 30,000 30, have been pledged. Uh, 10,000 pledged um, in 2016, and 20,000 in 2015. So the balance to raise is $14,746.59, and that's as of last Thursday. Oh, sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just kind of wanted to jump back to item K again, and I'm not sure if Mark can address this or if the mayor might, but it really was a good thing that we were able to keep 12th Street going into this roundabout, but 
there was a consequence that came with that and we took a big chunk of commercial property in the southwest corner of that how much did we lose on the depth of that of those lots and what does that equate to tax dollar wise do we know both of them are in the town but we could annex so those that's in our growth area yeah that's I don't have a, an answer for you uh, in terms of a dimension, but just to initially when they, in order to allow full access to 12th Street, the location of the cul-de-sac was actually further west than what is shown mm -hmm. now. So we, whatever we lost there, they were able to gain some additional space by moving it east now, which helps with the alignment on Racine Street itself, gives you better sight lines at 12th Street and does provide uh, some additional depth uh, or return some of that depth to those parcels but Greg I don't know if you have an idea on that yeah I just looked at that and I know that's in our growth area and and you know there's strong potential for those to be in the city and you know that's kind of a unintended consequence of that it does make I, I do like the way that it turned out but there certainly are concerns with what we potentially lost in revenue and, and growth on that also. So I just, I was just curious and if we can find out. So I do have the floor, Alderman Savinich. Thank you. I, I did. It is, Stan is correct. Most of it is still in the town. A portion of it is in the city that we just annexed just recently. I did want to comment a little bit further about one of the other things that came up at that meeting was replacement of the entrance sign. And we've been discussing that with the DOT ever since the proposal for a roundabout came out. We um, originally tried to have it placed within the center of the roundabout. The DOT does not allow signage in, do they call them interchange roundabouts or system roundabouts? Um, so following that, Scott Ebel and the DOT <laughs> Except for Bergstrom. That wouldn't be a system interchange, though. That one's not on a freeway exit. Uh, we did talk about the area just to the east of the roundabout, and they actually suggested us looking into that further. <coughs> so I talked to the DOT today, as a matter of fact, and they're looking at a meeting sometime in April to discuss how that portion of the property would be further used. And so everyone knows that we're still continuing working on that long comment. Alderman right. Zelinski. Thank you. <laughs> Item L, since Al Adam Alex is here, there were some questions about recycling and waste pickup, the cost comparison to other things. And since I don't want him to waste his trip here, maybe. So I already spoke to him earlier about the numbers and stuff. Maybe you might want to fill in the council and maybe they might have some questions. Yeah, I was going to bring that up anyhow uh, in a proactive manner. But since Adam is here, I'll let him explain that. What we originally started to to try and do is provide apples to apples cost comparison and we chose the town of Menasha uh, primarily because of the automated refuse collection. However, we're not dealing with apples to apples as sort of apples to oranges. There's a number of things that are done differently. And when I put this together, I, I in hindsight, I, I'm guessing based on some of the questions that came up, Alderman Langdon had some questions as well, is that maybe we ought to sort of revisit this and perhaps shift some of the uh, uh, drop site costs more towards the uh, uh, overall collection or processing of residential um, recyclables. So I think what it would probably be best to uh, give me a couple more weeks, we'll revisit this. I didn't want to provide like a six page report with about six different footnotes because of all the differences. I was trying to be able, trying to condense this into something that was, I guess, easy to understand and, and put out a good number, a good uh, cost comparison. And obviously that didn't quite work out as well as I'd liked it to have. So if you give us a couple of weeks, we'll, we'll bring something back to you guys, okay? Okay, thank you. I just wonder if there's a closer comparison to a different community other than the town of Menasha because they're so spread out and they're dealing with bigger lots and more land space than than we are correct and like you and I had talked I I'll probably reach out to Appleton and sort of uh, and, and see what they can provide me as far as what what their costs are and, and take a little closer look at, at uh, 
the level of service that they provide. There again, it's going to be a little, somewhat of a challenge to get us something that, that we believe in as, you know, somewhat apples to apples, but we'll certainly get, try and do, do so. Just one point I do want to make in regards to the numbers that you do see. What I did is some quick math after uh, last week Friday, and I took all of the costs of the drop site and threw it in there, and, and we're still, our, our, our rate per household is still less. And I would say even considerably less when you uh, factor in the cost per homes versus the households that we service. So, but I'll get you a, what I think is a little better number, especially in regards to the uh, uh, handling of our recyclables. Okay. Thank you for your presence. Sure. Is there any other discussion on the minutes and communications? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Item G is the consent agenda. There's only three items on the consent agenda this evening. The minutes to approve from the council meeting of January 19th. The administration committee recommendations from January 19th for the agreement with Core Inc. for the engineering services for Province Terrace Trail and the Park and Recreation Board recommendations from January 12th for changes to programs and service fees for 2015 as presented. Does anyone wish to have any of the items separated this evening? Alderman Nichols. Number three. Sure. Any other items? So do we have a motion to approve the other two items? Alderman Benner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. At this time, I'd like to make a motion to approve consent agenda items one and two. There's a motion and a second. Could we have a roll call vote, please? Motion carried on roll call 7-0. At this point, do we have a motion for item three? Alderman Benner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. At this time, I make a motion to approve Consent agenda item number three, changes to programs and services fees for 2015 as presented in the memo. There's a motion, a second. Is there discussion? Alderman Nichols? Go ahead. I'm sorry, my memory was from last meeting. It was presented in the communications, but we hadn't voted on it, and so it's here this time that's yes. my only confusion oh, okay that's why I pulled it out thank you no problem I forgot any other discussion if not could we have a roll call vote please motion carried on roll call seven zero item I is action items the first item is the amount accounts payable and payroll for January 20th through 29th do we have a motion Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll move to approve the accounts payable and payroll for the term of 12015 to 12915 in the amount of one million fifty thousand nine hundred forty six dollars and fifty six cents. There's a motion and a second. Is there discussion? Seeing none, could we have a roll call vote, please? Motion carried on roll call seven zero. Item two is the beverage operator's license applications for the 2013 through 15 licensing period. Do we have a motion? Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll move to approve the beverage operator's license applications for the 2013 through 2015 licensing period as listed in the police department memo dated January 28th, 2015. There's a motion, a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, could we have a roll call vote, please? Motion carried on roll call 7-0. Item three is amendment number one to the Wisconsin DOT Third Street Bridge Replacement Project. Um, Alderman Sevenick. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, I'll move for the adoption of amendment one to the Wisconsin DOT Third Street Bridge Replacement Project Engineering Service Agreement. Second. Is a motion and a second? Is there any discussion? Seeing none, could we have a roll call vote, please? Motion carried on roll call 7 0. Item 4 is to authorize the subordination of mortgage under 
Section 13.05 of the Development Agreement by and between the City of Menasha and the Ponds LLC as of September 7, 2011. Do we have a motion? Oh, Alderman Engelbert. Uh, <clears throat> Determining that it is in the best interest of the City of Menasha that the Ponds of Menasha LLC construct phases two and three under the development agreeing, agreement and finding that it is necessary to subordinate mortgage number two document number four six nine three seven three in order to facilitate construction of phases two and three i'd move that council organize mortgage number two to move to second position second. there's a motion and a second is there discussion alderman Sevenick? yes um uh, today i received a memorandum from the city attorney and i thought maybe this would be a good time if she would just want to for the public uh address that memorandum and why we're doing this because I did have some people um, I think they have some mixed uh, understandings about this and this way if you would explain it I think it'd be better as you'll recall the city of Menasha entered into an agreement with Ponds of Menasha LLC a developer and as part of the transfer of land in our Lake Park Villas to the ponds of Menasha, the developer executed a promissory note in the amount of $673,500 approximately. And securing that promissory note, there are two mortgages. Under the original development agreement, mortgage one is in a second mortgage position um, obviously securing properties then in phase one. Um, the developer has been, as everyone has been informed um, over the course of the last uh, few years, has been completing and constructing homes in phase one. And as each of the homes is sold under the terms of the agreement, the developer pays $5,700. And so over the course um, of the last few years, there, I believe, is approximately 95000 left on that mortgage. That, as I mentioned, is a second mortgage. And then there is a, what I call mortgage number two, but it's actually a first mortgage that the city holds and that secures properties in phases one and two the developer has be or excuse me two and three thank you two and three under the original terms of the development agreement when phase one is completed the development agreement does provide that we move to a second position and what the developer is requesting at this time is they're ready to, well, they have already begun phases two and three, but they are, you know, ready to move further into the development and are in need of actually having that mortgage move to a second position now for purposes of their bank then, um, so they can secure additional funding. So that's the request. It is, um, we did not define what is meant by completion of phase one. The developer has added, I think, or will have added, um, once our assessor uh, completes the work for January 1, 2014, we um, are of the opinion that the value added will have met the threshold level or threshold value that's in the development agreement under phase one. Mayor, thank you. Um, the 95,000 that is still a balance, is that expected to be because of the number of permits out there expected to be paid by uh, this year at some point? And that might be a question for Greg. I think he's more familiar with how many are out there yet. So, well, the 95,000 that's out there, that would equate to, uh, I think, a dozen lots that remain to be purchased uh, by uh, Lexington. Mm -hmm. So we would expect those to be uh, 
acquired this year, as well as the parcels that are presently under development in phases three and soon to be under uh, development in phase two. Okay. Well, I mean, if anyone's been out there and they've seen the growth, um, I'm very confident that uh, the way it's gone, actually it's what, almost, what is it, two or three years ahead, three years ahead of time here? And um, I would encourage council to support this. Thank you. Pam, you mentioned something about number two and three. There's already something going on there. What kind of assets or whatever, or what are they, what are they doing in two and three? In phase three, that's the area down along 114 and that pond, the stormwater pond that's there. Uh, they've put in the uh, sewer and water. Uh, yeah. So, so they they are putting that infrastructure in that area this winter. Okay. Anything in two? Where is two then? I two is uh, in in the uh, phase two is in the northwest corner of the subdivision. Pam, if you want to pull out that drawing. Okay. 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 Yeah, it's probably in here. But anyway, how big are these? Are these two parcels, and how many properties, how many houses will be built in, in, in those two parcels? In phase three, down along the river, I, I, or down along the pond, I believe there's 20 parcels there. Um, there were 72 in phase one, so that gets us to 92. There's a total of 125 lots, so that would be, what, 32 left in the, uh, my math might be a little off, but something like that in the uh, northwest in phase uh, in phase two. And the other question was somebody asked me, what at what point would they be putting the sidewalks in in phase one to get the, that one closed out? Uh, do you recall going to the development agreement? There's a trigger in there. That's in our CIT, and I, I can get that. Yeah. Well, I would just like to get number one closed out and the stuff that we want done before we get too far extended out there, and then they say, well, we're done. <laughs> the sidewalks aren't in. I don't want that to happen, but it can. The, the sidewalks aren't the responsibility of the developer. Those, those will be installed by us as part of our street construction but program that's an and special process. It's a special, special assessed, yes. option to that. Um, and what's the worst case scenario that can happen here? If Well, we would be moving from a first position to a second position, so and there would be somebody ahead of us. And there's enough assets installed in these two, in, in, in number two, to cover the payment on taxes if we did, if there was a default? Well, in addition, um, you'll have to ask that question again. What was that? <laughs> is, there, is there enough assets installed in the second one to cover our 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 debt on that property. There's probably payments still being made on this property. If something would happen, would there be enough tax revenue to support that? The payment on the debt. I am confused. I am confused by the question. So are you, are you asking us? Well, is there if enough? nothing happened? Yes. Would the new taxes cover Our the debt, debt that we currently yes. have? I don't know if we've Is calculated that. I will tell you that as part of the development agreement, um, the developer would receive a financial incentive or is, is you know, expected to receive a financial incentive, and those payments would not be made if um, he is not current on any agreement or any term of the agreement um, that he has. So that would okay, be a, a, you know, if he stopped making payments or something or wasn't paying taxes, well then that that stops during that period of time. I just know which way the constru construction industry can turn overnight and I just want the taxpayers <coughs> covered on some of this. And if you'll recall, actually, the reason that this whole TIF was developed was to pay the taxpayers back. Yes. That was 
the so purpose far, of it. So far, it's working out really well, and I hope it goes on. And, it, and so without it, there would have been zero. Yes. And the, as I recall, it was over a half million dollars a year on the tax. It was more than that? Yeah. Peggy, do you recall? I, I believe it was uh, more in the neighborhood of three quarters of a million. Three quarters of a million dollars that was coming right off the, right out of the taxes. The levy. Right, okay. off the, right, right off the levy. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? If not, could we have a roll call vote, please? Motion carried under roll call 7-0. Item 5 is to approve the authorization for the City of Menasha to challenge the Village of Harrison December 30th, 2014 and 14th. December 30th, 2014, annexation. I'll get it eventually. Alderman Seven. I'll have to reread that, actually. Go ahead. Just so that the motion, not because it's what you did, but. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor, at this time, I'd like to move that we authorize the city of Menasha to challenge the village of Harrison's December 30th, 2014, annexation. Second. You did a much better job than I did. <laughs> Is there any further discussion? There is a motion and a second. Seeing none, could we have a roll call vote, please? Motion carried on roll call 7-0. Item J is ordinances and resolutions. The first item is resolution three. It's a preliminary resolution declaring intent to exercise special assessment powers. Is there a motion, Alderman Sevenick? And actually on that last motion, you're the one that wrote it. <laughs> I called you and asked you what you wanted, so. <laughs> But anyway, so I wrote fact, it, but I can't say it, right? <laughs> right. J1, um, I, I move for the adoption of R315, the preliminary resolution. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, could we have a roll call vote, please? Motion carried on roll call 7-0. Item two is resolution five relating to a reduction of election inspectors. Is there a motion? Thank Alderman you, Better. This time I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution R-5-15, resolution relating to the reduction of election inspectors. Is there a second? second. There's a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? Seeing none, could we have a roll call vote, please? Motion carried on roll call 7-0. Item three is resolution six, and it's a resolution creating an ad hoc committee to uh, deal with the salvage and reuse of the former bank columns. Is there a motion? Alderman Taylor. Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve R615 resolution creating an ad hoc <laughs> Column Salvage and Reuse Committee introduced by Mayor Marcus. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, could we have a roll call vote, please? Motion carried on roll call 7 0. Item 4 is we get lots of resolutions tonight, don't we? <laughs> it's resolution 7. It's a resolution approving the naming of the Bergstrom naming Bergstrom Automotive as a sponsor of the Senior Center Community Room. Is there a motion? Alderman Zielinski. I make the motion to pass resolution R7-15 for approving naming Bergstrom Automotive as sponsor for the Senior Center Community Room. Second. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Alderman Sevenick. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, originally, originally uh, I was asked to uh, sponsor this and I thought we had a resolution or a, a ordinance that prohibited us from doing this, so that's part of the reason I chose not to do that. Um, unless the city attorney can tell me otherwise, but uh, I'm just concerned of this practice that it might snowball. It has nothing to do with the issue at hand here. Um, <clears throat> actually, for the public. Uh, out of fairness to Berkson Automotive, they did not even ask for this. Um, I guess it was kind of 
the committee was excited of their friendly donation and that they would like to do something for doing that and, and so I'll support it for that purpose but to put a period of year on it I had some difficulty with uh, also 15 years um, I don't know uh, we've done some of this with uh, the, the oh, I can't even think of the name now in the county facility maybe Jim you can help me out the, the Coglin Center or the uh, Sunny View and they take sponsors too but they don't spread them out over 15 year periods and so I thought maybe the, the year should be changed a little bit to maybe 10 years instead of 15 I think it's too long of a time no one's going to remember that after 15 years they may not remember in 10 years either so I'd like to offer an amendment to change uh, the community room period for 10 years there's an amendment on the floor is there a second There's a motion and a second. Is there discussion on just the amendment at this point? Stan, did you have something on oh, amendment? Sorry. Here? Is there any discussion on the amendment? Alderman Nichols? Um, Director McKinney, is there a reason behind the 15 years that you recommended in your resolution? Thank you, no. Um, we just chose 15 years as maybe the next time that there might be a renovation in place and that was the logic so uh, that that is the reason thank you alderman Zelinsky. thank you i don't care if it's 10 or 15. <laughs> I, when we start running out of rooms let me know <laughs> <laughs> is there any other discussion on just the amendment this evening could we have a roll call vote on the amendment, please? Motion carried on roll call 6 1. At this point, we have a motion as amended on the floor. Is there a discussion on the amended, amended motion? Alderman Benner? Oh, I, I just was questioning what the sponsorship was going to look like if they had a vision as far as doing some kind of plaque or something to. To recognize this the vision is to name the community room and underneath it say sponsored by Bergstrom automotive um, there also will be a donor plaque for all people who have contributed and of course we're thankful for all contributions yeah well, there is a substantial amount of money that had to be raised for this and so that it should be a pretty extensive plaque but how big was the how big was this plaque and I mean physically size wise how big was this whole thing going to look I, I don't have a vision for that I can ask the senior center director for um, some guidance on that and get back to you all right thank you Alderman Sevenick mayor I also just wanted to note too that there were other sponsors who actually donated more that didn't make this request or want this request Any further discussion? Seeing none, could we have a roll call vote, please? Motion carried on roll call 7 0. Item K is appointments. The first item is the appointment of Brenda Marks of 37 Tago Street to the Committee on Aging. Is there a motion? And everyone at once, please. Alderman Sevenick. I'll make the uh, motion for your appointment to Bre for Brenda Marks. To the committee on aging. So, motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item L is held over business, and that item was already taken up, taken up up above. Unless someone would like to take action on that, that was held at the last meeting. But we'll just die on its own at the, after this. Item N is public comments on any matter listed on the agenda. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak on anything we spoke about this evening? Tom? Tom Kanetsky, 5 8 Emily Street, Menasha. Uh, three things. Number one, what Alderman Stefanich and Taylor spoke to 
about 10 NEO ne- ne- team meetings. People out there, they do listen. Come to the meetings. You might be surprised, they will. You might not agree with, they might not agree with everything you say, but many things they do, they do listen. Secondly, Mayor Mertens, as far as that signage on the entrance there, or 41, and Racine Road, when we knew that, let's do that up nice. Don't skimp on that. Let's make a nice, nice signage there. And the third item, as far as the Cosmo Park improvements, I would like to commend the city for moving forward on this. Uh, I uh, represent the Menasha Max in this area, vice president and general manager. We've been working with Vince and Brian, uh, Brian and also Mr. Uh, Taylor, Mike Taylor, and uh, Langdon on the fundraising. We made some progress, not as much as we want. Uh, I can guarantee you some money on the Manasha Max uniform deposit. We'll put that on the back burner. We've had it for a number of years, and we will continue to uh, try to raise funds for that project. We are instrumental on raising funds out there through the years. The concession stand, the dugout, the batting cages, a uh, uh, locker room, stuff like that. Uh, and we have our $500 scholarship. We've been giving that to Manasha High and uh, St. Mary's. We will not discontinue that. And we will get the money more for your Cosmo Park improvements. I'll guarantee it. If there's anybody out there that we missed, we sent out about 80 letters asking for donations for that. It is your ballpark. We will try to raise funds, but it's your ballpark, a beautiful ballpark. But we have kind of fallen behind there now. So we miss you on our mailings. Step forward and be heard, and uh, we'll, we'll accept your donation gladly. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Konetsky. Is there anyone else? If not, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? second? All those in favor? Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you.